Hi, everyone, we're back. Uh, and we're going to be hopping in to our first adventure of the evening, one which I have entitled Page Turner. Uh, but before we do so, we are, as always, going to introduce our heroes. So uh, without further ado, our first hero joining tonight, yes, joining us tonight is a brand new adventurer here in the lands of D&D time. We have Ayuni Lesia. Hello, Ayuni. Uh, hi. Uh, how are I, you, Ayuni? I'm... Welcome. Um, uh, I don't know. I I get a bad case of stage fright every now and then, but I guess I'm doing okay. I'm glad to hear that, and I'm I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I suppose that is what, well what I'm obliged to do in this situation. Um, so Ayuni, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're new here in Bartholomew's adventuring troop. What made you want to join the troop? What's your skill set? What brings you to the lands of D and D time? I came looking for my sister. Um, your sister, of course. I, I mean, I recognize your last name. Uh, I say your sister, Hiyori, I have to assume? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you looking for your sister for? Any particular purpose? Or are you just hoping to uh, meet up with her here in the lands? Uh, it, there's a purpose for it, other than just checking up on her. Uh, is it one that you can share, or? Her friends were a little worried. I hadn't heard from her ever since they started sending the uh, cash grants for our previous job. Well, you've certainly come to the right place. Uh, Yuri is around here pretty frequently, so I imagine, you know, you spend enough time around Bartholomew's shop, you'll, statistically, you'd have to run into her, uh, run into Yuri eventually. I don't know. She always seems to escape me. Mm, well, I, uh, I wish you the best of luck. And, well, she's not in this adventuring party. But again, I'm sure you'll, uh, I'm sure you'll have success soon. Welcome, Eunie. Uh, thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, and next up, we have rejoining us now, Thrum, uh, the Loxodon Druida. Uh, hello, Thrum. How are you? Ah, yes. Hello, hello, hello. I'm... Eh, I could be better, but could also be quite worse, so all in all, can't complain too much. A, a neutral state for Thrum today. Yes, rather neutral. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Thrum, how are you recovering? I know the last time that you adventured, you uh, were under some pretty serious stress. I think a whole statue fell on you, right? Eh, it's a statue. It's heavy. <laughs> uh, it, I feel pretty fine from that. I've been, they seem to caught some sort of strange bug that I can't quite shake off. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What, what kind of symptoms are you experiencing? What's, what's kind of... What's kind of <laughs> <you right now? laughs> and Thrum just kind of <laughs> sneezes violently. Uh, yes, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you have a pretty mighty sneeze there, Thrum. I, I heard it come out through your trunk. Uh, of course, for anyone unfamiliar, you're a, a loxodon, which is an elephant person. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope that you kind of overcome your sniffles. Do you think that's going to impede your adventuring today? Uh, no, I don't believe so. It shouldn't be too big of an issue. Uh, well, I, uh, I hope, I hope not, uh, as, uh, well, we'll have to see what happens when you get out there. But, uh, I never like to hear that anyone's feeling a little under the weather. Uh, but regardless, welcome back, Thrum. Well, thank you very much. Of course, of course. Uh, next up, we have joining us, returning once more, uh, we have Bog Bros. Bog, hello. Oh, hello, my good man. Uh, how are you today, Bog? Well, you know, I could be better. Uh, yeah, it's just fine. Uh, fair enough. Everyone's kind of in a, uh, a, a middle ground today, it seems like. Uh, but Bog, I, I guess you also were recovering from uh, a fairly traumatic experience the last time uh, you went out within Bartholomew's adventuring troop. Uh, you you died, Bog. How are you holding up? You know, it's been very traumatic for me. I don't think I'll ever recover from that one. Uh, yeah, that's, all. that's something that a lot of Bartholomew's adventurers do say after after dying. Uh, it's it's very uh, it's very understandable, Bog, but. I have to applaud you for having the bravery to come back out and, and get back on the horse, even after such a traumatic experience. You know, it, it was just an experience. I'll have to keep going on, live and forget. I live and forget. Uh, everyone's, uh, everyone's favorite old saying. 
Um, so what's what's good in your life, Bob? What's anything kind of new? Anything you're excited about? You're a, you're a boxer, of course. You looking forward to maybe um, you know throwing some fisticuffs around today? Oh, definitely. I'm looking for like the newest challenger. Anyone who can put up a fight, you know. We'll have to see if there's anyone that's able to step to Bog uh, in this particular adventure. Welcome back, Bog. Oh, thank you, my good man. Of course, of course. And last but not least, uh, our <laughs> uh, uh, looks like our uh, first adventure is not currently with us, but uh, Valorant should be joining us shortly. Uh, and as you all kind of stand around Bartholomew's office, he speaks up to you. Valorant should be joining you shortly. Uh, we do have uh, four for this one. Uh, he's just having a little bit of uh, trouble finding the play. I think he's meeting you at your destination. So for now, I'm just going to uh, send you off. Uh, you're all going to Sokotoa. It is a, um, the city of the Trigger Gnomes. Uh, I don't know if you're not familiar with the Trigger Gnomes. They're a race of gnomes that uh, they are very good at math uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, you're going to the library there. Apparently, the librarian's missing or something. I'm sure you'll be filled on the details uh, when you get there. So, if you don't have any questions, I will send you right upon your way. Uh, oh, 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 okay. And yes, uh, Ayuni, uh, welcome, by the way. I know this is your uh, first adventure, having uh, known your sister for uh, quite some time now. I am expecting great things from you, Ayuni. Um, thanks, yes, I uh, suppose. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, no need to thank me, just. Well, let's see what you can all do. Uh, and with that, he snaps his fingers, and you find yourself suddenly shifted around. The scenery changes into one of uh, hustle and bustle. Uh, around you now, as you walk through the city streets of what you must assume to be Sokotoa, as that is how Bartholomew tends to move people around is instantly. Um, you can see various gnomes going about their daily tasks. You can hear the sounds of, um, hear the sounds of hammers and various carts uh, kind of working and, and bustling. A lot of them are kind of swinging around on scaffolding and building very tall buildings here. Tall even to you, those of you who are not gnomish in size. Um, so immense uh, for the scale of the residents here. Uh, a lot of them seem to be working also on things that are decidedly high in technology and magic. Um, you can see, uh, you hear various kind of like explosions and zzz, zzz, the sparks of electricity uh, as a lot of the gnomes here practice the, uh, the sciences and invention is a common thing. Um, but the place, particular place that you're headed towards from what Bartholomew told you is the library, perhaps um, one of the more tame uh, sectors of Sokotoa. Um, you're walking among the city streets and you can see it uh, looming as you kind of navigate to that point in the distance. Uh, it is in a, in a kind of a city, a, a jungle of metal and iron. It is a monolith of stone. Uh, and it also seems relatively poorly kept. Uh, there are all manner of like weeds and things growing out of the steps. Um, you can see kind of cracked stone that walks up. Um, the doors are kind of an old wood. Uh, and there are a few people kind of gathered in front of it. And you can also see what looks like a, a glowing light that seems to be pouring from some of the windows within the, uh, within the library. And that is the scene that you all enter into. What would you all like to do? Hmm. Um, is gonna look at the rest of her party, considering... I would suppose the rest of them are not quite so, uh, small as she is. She's 5'4". Okay. Um, there's, you're certainly feel tall in this place, as kind of walking around there are uh, various uh, various gnomes that are kind of, you know, bustling and, and moving about. Um, and, yeah, they're all kind of tall. A lot of them are, you know, they're friendly, but they're also very busy. They're walking about, oh, good day to you. Uh, another kind of tips their hat, ah, oh, good day, uh, as they kind of blunder past. Uh, amidst them, however, you see a figure that is decidedly not gnomish. Um, tall and graceful, uh, you see an, a half-elven uh, man begin to approach you, uh, and you, uh, you in particular, through him, recognize uh, this adventurer from your recent excursion. You see Valrath uh, walking up, who is apparently meeting you here in Sokotoa, looking for this missing librarian. Uh, Valrath, uh, welcome. Why, hello. Yes, uh, you see your adventuring party. Bartholomew sent you out here in a little bit in advance. 
Um, you're headed to the uh, the library because apparently the library in there has gone missing. You're outside of there now. Uh, but yeah, you see the uh, the rest of your party walking up. Um, so what do you guys all want to do? Vroom would like to look and see what the easiest entrance for someone of his great size into the library would be. Um, the main door, actually, that kind of leads into it, it is um, pretty tall. It's, it's made of uh, a fine oak, and it's... You're going to have to maybe duck a little bit, uh, but it looks like it's designed for people of, you know, at least a medium size, uh, or like a, you know, a lower medium size, humans and things. Um, you know, definitely... Definitely a little bit titanic for gnomes, uh, but it's definitely big enough for you to walk in through the main door. Uh, but like I said, there's a whole bunch of gnomes that seem to be gathered around outside of it, and these kind of like strange lights that are pulsating from the window. Uh, what's anyone else doing? You know, I'm just gonna go look at those shiny lights. Is there anything interesting? Yeah, um, so you walk up to the steps, uh, and as you're kind of getting closer. Uh, you, you go over to the window and you look around. You're starting to kind of draw a little bit of attention uh, as a, a bugbear walking through here. Uh, the trigger gnomes here are definitely a little suspicious of goblins. As for any of you who are in the know, they have a, a long-standing rivalry with a group of math goblins, and they're not sure if bugbears also can be math bugbears as a goblinoid. So they're, they're kind of eyeing you up, but then they see your adventurous patch. I'll go ahead and make a perception check as you look through the window. Four, uh, as you look into the room beyond, uh, you can see there are brightly colored lights and they're moving about in a, uh, something of a swirling pattern uh, within this space. They are, um, they're pretty dazzling, honestly. They're blues and purples and greens, a lot of kind of you know, cooler colors that seem to twist and bend uh, throughout the space, almost taking on physical presence like lines. Uh, you can't really, you know, that's what you discern as you're looking through. Me. Um, and as you're kind of getting up there, one of those gnomes sort of walks over to you. Um, and excuse me there. Excuse me. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I noticed uh, you have um, you have one of those cat. You work for Bartholomew, right? You're the adventurers we hired. Oh yeah, I'm here for Bartholomew. All right, yeah, we have something of a situation. Um, the library here. Uh, is operated by a gnome called Winsler Bubble Books. He works inside the library, he tends to the books. Not a lot of gnomes uh, come in here. Uh, I think he's just about the only one that ever visits here. Uh, well, because he runs it. Um, frankly, the library is a pretty boring place. It's just all books and literature. I'd much rather, a, I mean, a math textbook I can get behind, but we keep those under lock and key for the most part. Um, but yeah, so I guess, we don't know how long he's been missing, but I guess one of his friends was supposed to meet up with him outside of here. He didn't show up. Um, so the last time he talked to him was a couple weeks ago. So he's been gone for a while. Uh, and well, when you need him, you look in the library because he's only the ever one and the only, he's the ever, the only one that's ever in there. Got it in a few, it took me a little while <laughs> on that one. Uh, so yeah, we, we try to go inside, but there are all these weird lights and the doors are locked. We can't get in. So we called in some professionals. We don't really know how to proceed here. Well, uh, we got to break down the doors. Do, do we get a, do we get free books from the library? If I don't know how libraries uh, work. I never, well. I, I never go in there. You'd have to talk to. Well, if everything goes well, then Bubble Books will be back there, and you can talk to him about books. I, I, I don't know. All right, that sounds like a deal. I mean, frankly, as far as I care. Uh, and you see, you seem to be a member of the town, uh, I can take whatever you want, you know, there's a whole bunch of books in there, and no one's reading them except for him, so. But, but isn't that stealing? Uh, I mean, it's like, I, as far as I'm concerned, no more stealing than picking up a piece of paper on the side of the road. It's cleaning up the place, if anything. If we can, you know, uh, right. we can turn this library into something a little bit more upstanding. Uh, you know, a science facility, an observatory, something with some value. Observe what kind of observatory? Uh, like stars? Yeah, you haven't seen the observatory. And points over the way to a uh, 
uh, a grandiose uh, looking kind of domed building with a, uh, a large telescope that kind of sticks out of it. Uh, another kind of like smaller one. Uh, it's a pretty elaborate looking observatory that you can see over across uh, the city way. Uh, it, n no, I wasn't aware. Uh, this is my first time being here. Sorry. Oh, well, welcome to the city. I'm sorry you have to start out in such a dingy location, but yeah, uh, do whatever you want. I mean, the door, I probably shouldn't break down the door if you can avoid it, but if there's no other way, then there's no other way. Uh, you're all, and he kind of looks past at the rest of you through Valwraith. Um, you're all a part of the crew, right? I heard we hired four. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, we'll leave this to the professionals from here on out. Uh, and he, uh, this guard kind of like steps away and just g gestures to the building, like, you know, have at it. All right, all right let's go then. Um, but yeah, what do you guys do? Um, is there any obvious reason as to why the door is not uh, unlocked? Yeah, um, well, why it's not unlocked, I guess you're not sure. You maybe have to investigate a little bit more. Um, but it's why the door won't open. Uh, it seems to be barred on the other side of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Are the windows... Yeah, are they they're like the, uh, Are they the kind that open or not? Um, you don't see any windows that open kind of in the, on the ground level, but higher up, there are some of the more kind of like traditional dormer windows. Um, there's a, you know, like a second floor and there's sort of a... Uh, some like columns that you can get up in a little awning and then some some windows and like a little balcony up there. It's a very nicely put together building. Beautiful okay. architecture. I'm gonna climb up. I'm gonna use the kite shield. Oh, and of course. Fly up <laughs> under the balcony. Um, the, uh, the tilt of the roof is not trivial. Uh, I will need you to make me an acrobatics check when you get up there to just kind of like maintain balance. Uh, oh. and yeah, but that's fine. 15 is, is absolutely going to get you there. You land up and then kind of step down. You see the some of the shingles on this chunk of roof kind of adjust a little bit under your feet, but you hold yourself. Uh, you're at the window. Uh, uh, I'm going to say if it opens. Um, you go and kind of push on it. It seems to also be kind of locked, uh, but, you know, you could try and, um, you know, pick through it. It's a pretty simple lock mechanism, you can see. You just have to, like, bump a little clasp. So, uh, okay. Go ahead. Please. Yeah, please. Well, the okay. Well, the bar door on ground floor can be seen through the windows. Yes, maybe. Um. Do you mean like the other side of the door? That's all flat, so you wouldn't be able to like look through the window at the back of the door. If that makes sense. It's like a, uh, a flat okay. wall. So, so I can't just make hands the bars off, can I? Um. You could, uh, I would let you make, can you, yeah, you can cast it into the room and then like try and guess at it. Uh, I would let you make uh, a sleight of hand check or I guess this would be a perception check to hear it. Uh, I would let you make sleight of hand perception or arcana with disadvantage to try and pull this off. Uh, okay. Um. Although I will say this, one thing that you could do, because um, since Valwright's up there now, um, the mechanism to unlock the window, you can just see that through the window. You could just unlock the window where Valwright is with, with pretty... Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's not going to be hard. The bar would be a lot more complicated, but... Actually, the, if that's easier, then that way we can get Valwright in the, the building. Yeah, I'm going to unlock the window. If you can yeah, uh, you don't even need to make a check for that. You just pop the hand in, which is a, a, a cool... It's a cool mage hand strategy. Uh, and the lock kind of uh, kind of pushes up and Valwraith is here there kind of complimenting how, uh, you know, thinking about how you're gonna pick through this thing. Uh, the window just, um, a hand appears and, and pops it open and you're able to slide right in. Okay. Um, you're gonna go so, around and unbar the door? Uh, I'm gonna look inside before I do. Yeah, uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Sixteen. All right, yeah, you're seeing these kind of green and purple and blue swirling lights that are rolling around in like kind of lines and streams, like great ribbons. And as you're looking at them, um, they appear to be words. Uh, you, you're catching them and the, the speed at which they're moving makes it a little bit hard to, uh, makes it a little bit hard to see, uh, but they seem to be like sentences. Uh, one of the phrases that you seem to get uh, as you're going through is, 
the lightning cracked throughout the, and then it just kind of like is moving past and you can't track it. Another one, you, you just see a once upon a time as you're moving through. Uh, all sorts of phrases, uh, letters carved in light that are dancing throughout the space. As I see the, and lightning crack, praise the cloud. <laughs> uh, you say a quick, uh, yes. you say a quick praise the cloud. Um, and then you're going to uh, pop the door open. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you go down and bar it, unbar it. It's just, um, if anything, it looks like it was just locked up for the night. Um, and yeah, you go and open the door and everyone's free to uh, hop into the space. And you all now see, um, you all now see these kind of colored words that are dancing throughout the room. Uh, they seem to be emanating from the rows and rows of bookshelves further towards the back. Um, they seem to be coming from a space in there. Come on in, guys. The water's fine. I don't I, think the water is fine for the books, though. I I like water. Water is fun. Um, very well. Uh, you all step in. Um, there's in front of you kind of a, a kiosk. Uh, you can see there's like what looks like a half-eaten sandwich that's sitting, uh, just kind of resting on the, the kiosk, uh, like a slightly drank glass of milk. Um, it's at gnomish height, so it's, it's kind of far below you. Um, and these lights are kind of streaming from a space that seems to be, you know, curved around back uh, and into the, uh, uh, into a, a corner of the room in the distance. It's where everything seems to be emanating from. Uh, what do you all do? Um, I'm going to see if I can catch all the words being said in the streaming colors. Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make a, uh, go ahead and make me a perception check. Uh, this is just your ability to perceive things quickly rather than like a, you know, just focus. What kind of comes down to 20. Yeah, all right. Uh, so you're going through and, and reading as, as much as you can. Um, you're, because of the, you know, the variance and the way there's a lot of different streams, you know that you're missing things just by nature of, you know, you can't perceive all, everything in the library simultaneously, uh, but you do manage to like catch one stream and, and follow it for a while. Uh, and it seems to be talking about, um, it seems to be talking about a village. Uh, the village seems to be called Hamlet and it's describing uh, in the story, it's talking about the blacksmith of Hamlet and how their son was kidnapped. Uh, it seems to be what they're talking about there. Uh, and it's just like a, it's just like a little bit of a tale about a, uh, a blacksmith whose son was kidnapped. Uh, it's going through, it's talking about him being kind of sad and forlorn uh, as he's there kind of working his anvil. Um, there's a lot of like descriptive words about his, you know, tears falling and the steam kind of coming up. Uh, but yeah, that's what you're reading about in this particular uh, line. Can I just go and save his son? Can I do an arcana check to see what these words floating around on? Because it seems to be a spell. Um, it's decidedly magical. Um, you can go ahead and make an arcana check. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and make an arcana check. Free at you, no clue. I, I uh, totally know what these are. It's magic it's, lights, dude. It's, it's a story. <laughs> uh, I yeah, mean, you, you. They're all forms of literature, and it's just kind of hard to tell. There's at least four words that I'm not quite sure what any of them mean. <laughs> Thrun would like to spend about ten minutes wondering exactly what kind of magic these are. These words are. Uh, you're casting ritual. detect magic. Yes, ritual casting detect magic. All right. Um, you guys kind of hold as you're kind of looking around and taking in the space. Uh, through as they're focusing, uh, through as they're focusing for some time, and you open your eyes and all around you, it appears to be illusion magic. Ooh. Through kind of like puts his hand, like tries to like watch one of the watch where one of these lines is going and like reaches out towards towards one as it gets close um, and so, just sort of see what it happens when he reaches out and touches the line of words. Um, you reach out and kind of put your, um, put one of your big elephant hands into it. And as you pass through it, it kind of like ripples a little bit. I need you to make me a strength saving throw. 
19. Uh, you feel yourself being like pulled almost by it. As for a brief moment, you kind of almost get stuck within this uh, within this kind of moving line of words, and then you, you drag your hand out, and it's fine. Uh, but yeah, there was definitely a pull. You even got dragged along the ground a little bit. You all saw Thrun's feet kind of move forward uh, as you were getting kind of chased into this, you know, run-on sentence. I don't think we want to touch these anymore. Was that a run-on sentence? It was not just a run-on sentence. It was a run-on and on and on and on and on sentence. Uh, oh. Yeah, those are kind of powerful. They just whisk you away, and if you get caught, I heard you you can't get unstuck from them. Um, so, uh, do you guys go to investigate the source, or are you going to... Uh, anything else you want to do before you're... You do so, or what's your what's the plan? Uh, you you said there's like a sandwich, right? Oh yeah, you can grab that sandwich if you're. Oh yeah, I'm grabbing the sandwich. Um, all right, you you look at it. It's a uh, seems to be bologna. It's definitely as you bite into it, it's definitely stale. Seems like it's probably been there for, by your best estimate, at least a week. Um, it's edible though. I want right. to see. Are there any books in this room? There's books. I mean, it's a library. There's shelves and shelves, and shelves and shelves. I want to see during the time he's casting if there's any interesting books that would catch my. Um, just looking around, there are. I mean, it's. I mean, it's a library. You know, you could find anything that you wanted. It would just be a question. The answer is yes, there are. Um, and the sky's the limit. Like whatever is interesting, you you could find a book for it if you wanted to. Like go through the time to. Like, yeah, search during that ten minutes, I'll like grab the the couple that are. Yeah, you, you find know, a nice um, or, or or even cooking. You find a nice book on weather patterns. Uh, that talks about you know uh, air currents and you know it's people who have dedicated their life to tracking the clouds' movement in a lot of ways. Uh, also, like anything for like cookbooks, especially if like you know a famous chef, like Ramsey Hellfire, maybe. Um, make an investigation check. Uh, you're not finding anything by Ramsey. There's certainly uh, cookbooks. Uh, you do catch a book called How to Have a Soothing Voice by Chogal Hammerfist. Do you notice that one sitting around? Um, that's anything that interests you. Um, but uh, yeah, as you're kind of going further into the library, because you're kind of going in now, it sounds like, Valwraith, I would like you to um, just, uh, as you're looking around, these things are getting kind of denser, and, and you're starting to feel this sort of pull that's it's kind of dragging you forward. I need you to also make me a strength saving throw. Uh, you guys, um, you're just kind of, this is right probably just around when you're finishing up with your spell room and you're identifying it as illusion, and you have this experience, uh, and then you hear from a little bit further in, um, uh, you're just kind of through them. You finished your sentence. We probably shouldn't touch these. Uh, and then you hear Valwraith. Uh, Valwraith, you're starting to get dragged deeper into the library by this string of words. Um, what do you uh, What do you say? Or do? I start just getting pulled in. Yeah, you're getting like pulled along and like being caught up into this string. Well, it looks like I'm going in. <laughs> uh, Valrath kind of calls out, uh, and Valrath, you start to feel yourself growing a little bit lighter. Your legs are kind of like picking up uh, and moving almost into it, and you're now just almost feels like you're swimming along this line of words. Your your body feels strange and warm, um, and you see him being pulled. The rest of you, uh, like. He's swimming in a river of words uh, as he's moving deeper into the library. What do the rest of you do seeing Valry? Thrun just puts his head down, shaking his head. Valwraith, what did you do? <laughs> Somebody had to do it! How fast is he moving? Um, Never mind, it wouldn't matter because there's no PvP in the land at the D time. I can't ray of frost him so long. Uh, now, yeah, that would be a, <laughs> You are correct. Um, but he's moving pretty quick. Uh, and he kind of turns around a corner and out of sight. Valwraith. Um, everything seems to be streaming towards this point. 
uh, and you can see as you're moving uh, moving along through the shelves, it seems to curl into um, a table that's here in the back of the library. There's some tables for like study and, and, and learning, and there is a very large open book uh, on that table that all of these things seem to be like pouring uh, into and out of. Oh, oh dear. Does Valwraith seem to be pouring into the book? Um, and Valwraith, in a moment, you pour into the book. I totally could have flew out, but I'd need to see what's in the book. <laughs> uh, take a uh, look. I take it's it back. I think we need to touch the things. <laughs> yes. Um, Sounds fine. Uh, what do, you, do you? What do you mean by touch the things? Like grab the words? Yes, we need to grab the words. All right, I'm going to uh, punch the words. All As right. I get sucked in, I'm going to yell, Geronimo! <laughs> and Valwraith disappears into the book with a great Geronimo. Uh, uh, you, uh, Bug, Bug, you go up and you find a nice word. A word comes by, it seems to be the word fight. And you, oh, <laughs> yeah, I punch that word. Yeah, you, right you, you smack the hell out of it. Uh, and it kind of gets knocked out of the stream, and then you replace it as you also get sucked into the stream <laughs> and consequently into the book. Uh, two of your allies have jumped in. It sounded like you were going in too, Thrum. Yeah, Thrum is... Thrum seems like... It seems to Thrum like going into this book is going to be particularly necessary. And uh, so Thrum finds a... Not... Finds a... Tries to find a peaceful-seeming passage of words to grab onto. Um, Perhaps something about nature. Um... You see, uh, the line that you seem to see is, uh, you woke up in a beautiful green field, uh, is what you see there. Um, and as you do, you kind of, your trunk, uh, kind of grabs onto it, and all of a sudden, trunk first, you see this massive elephant, uh, kind of compressed down and seem to stretch and bend. Uh, Ayuni, as you are now alone in the library, as everyone else has, uh, disappeared into this book. Do you follow suit? I very, very, very first and foremost, I would like to go up to the book if I don't get sucked into it by the sheer gravity of its words. Uh, make a strength save. Oh no. Oh no. You hold on. You can feel it like pulling you. The closer you get to it, the more it seems to just be dragging you in. But you take a few steps. You're, you're holding on to the table for as long as you can. You're up at the book. You can feel, you know, your hair. Or I guess you don't. Uh, what's your uh, What's your look? Do you, do you have any of the kind of like I know some dragonborn kind of have like hair, like scales. But what's uh what's Annie look like? Uh, Annie is very close to her sister in terms of looks. Uh. Other than being slimmer, no, she has horns, no hair. Okay. Um, well, you're kind of, you know, the outer edges of your clothes are almost being like pulled up and into it, but you're holding fast uh, as you look at this big open book. It's it's huge on the table, uh, bound in what looks like a very old letter. The pages are just <laughs> uh, flapping wildly, um, and kind of you hear that sound as you're moving in the space, uh, as it's trying to, with all its might to drag you in, or just by nature of what it is, is accidentally doing so. Um, what do you do? Is what are you trying to look for as you're here? Uh, I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to see if there are any words on the pages of the book, and if I can turn the page. First um, the pages, um, uh, the pages actually seem blank. Um, as you are looking at them, and you can see for brief moments, words seem to scatter in and off of them and then stack back onto them. Like the words in this book are the ones that are kind of being thrown around the area. Um, as you go to turn the page, the moment you kind of come to contact with the page, you also get sucked into this kind of force and find yourself zipped around uh, and into, for a moment, what is absolute darkness for all of you. I and hate then, roller coasters. And then, after what seems like a small period of, of silence, a voice, a, a voice seems to speak out, just kind of amongst it. And it says, The four heroes woke up in a beautiful green field. And all of you find yourselves kind of laying on your backs, you look up, 
and as you hear this, you're in a very nice looking green field. Praise the cloud. He spoke aloud. The voice kind of says again after you say that. Green just kind of <clears throat> rolls over and bends down, examining the grass very, very closely. Thrum felt the grass beneath his body as he rolled amongst it. It was lush and vibrant, with touches of moss and small anthills toppled by his elephantine form. The voice calls out in the sky. And as he's saying these things, it's true. Aene will look up at the sky to see if it's daylight or moonlight. Um, it's a very nice because... day. There's a light breeze. Uh, and as you're looking around, um, Ayuni, you hear a voice say, Ayuni stood and took a moment to gain the bearings. As they looked around, they saw a winding dirt road. They knew destiny called them forth to whatever lie ahead. Hey guys, I think we should go that way. I'm totally gonna use the kite shield to like just fly up off the ground and just in the same spot, just land. Um, all right, so you're just gonna just jump up and down? Just jump up off my back using the kite shield and then just land straight up, stand. <laughs> all right, yeah, you do so. Uh, and the voice kind of calls out heedless of the raging wind. Uh, and as soon as that happens, you see the wind actually seems to pick up a little bit and the kite shield starts to like pull you away a little. Uh, but you didn't go so high, you were just kind of trying to stand up. Uh, and the voice can heedless of the raging wind. Valwraith Windrunner jumped up and away, but was pulled by his kite shield. He landed back down to the ground quickly to avoid being carried away to parts unknown. Parts said none sounds pretty fun. He uh, said apropos of nothing. <laughs> uh, Valwraith, I don't think that we really should go off to parts unknown quite yet. He spoke perhaps, erring words perhaps of caution. This, perhaps the parts unknown down this road might be slightly less unknown. And I don't know, maybe there's a gnome this, maybe there's a gnome this way. So, you could call it unknown? Never talk again! So you mean parts unknown? No, no, no. We don't parts want unknown. parts unknown. We don't want that. We so we want to go to parts unknown. Opposite known. of what? what? We want, want to go to parts gnome. So I, you would, want I would parts. personally like to go to parts unknown. So you want gnome parts? What? I, I want to go to parts gnome. They bickered and gibbered confusingly as they continued on down the dusty path. And as the voice kind of says this, you all find that all of a sudden you're just kind of like walking along this path. Yeah. Uh, and you're not sure kind of quite when you started moving, but you're, you're there. And in the distance, you can see uh, what looks like the gates into a town uh, leading up ahead. Vroom! ponders for a moment, stares up at the sky, and just kind of points questioningly at the gates. Uh, and the voice goes, Throom stood and pointed at the gates, gesturing to his party. Indeed, gates were forward. <laughs> what he said. Hey, you need gonna 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 walk towards the gates quietly. All right. Um, you continue forward. A <coughs> really hesitant but confident stepped forward. A paradox in every word. Uh, and you kind of, you know, you walk up to, uh, you walk up to the gates. She moved forward into the gates of the city and before them lagged a rustic small town, quaint and pleasant. The citizens walked around, ignorant of the terrible tragedy that had happened here not long ago. I get a feeling this town's called Hamlet. With the sound of the horrible deed not long ago, I'm totally getting ready for battle. 
I pull out the hall blade. And I tighten my grip on my shield. Valorant and I walk to the gate. Valorant himself for combat as he approached the gate, sure of terrible dangers that lie within, but was disappointed to see only a town. He had readied his weapon for no particular reason. I'll fight this town if I want to, boys. <laughs> He yelled at the sky, speaking to no one. His insanity was reaching its peak. <laughs> hey, hey, Faris, you okay? Absolutely. I've yeah. never been better as I menacingly shake my fist <laughs> in the air. All right, buddy boy, calm down there. Uh... Room just kind of drapes his trunk over Valerie's shoulders and shushes gently. Not Broom. crazy. Broom showing a moment of compassion for his clearly crazy compatriot comforted him before guiding them forward. Their destiny to meet the blacksmith unbeknownst to them still. Uh, How would they ever cross paths? Mr. Disembodied Voice, how, how is he unbeknownst to us if you just told us about him? <laughs> and he, um, he said confusedly as the sky says it does not exist. Uh, Valwraith spoke into the air again to no one. His insanity <laughs> now passed on to his elephantine companion. <laughs> you know what? Amy's just gonna go in. She's gonna walk into town. She's gonna. She's Tell gonna. Tell they do too. Ayuni strided, strode forth, looking around with curiosity and wonderment. With each new sight, they felt incredible joy and glee at the happiness that was felt here in this small village. They'd never felt truly at home as they did now. It's a fine village. <laughs> it's all right. So, um, to have a restaurant, have a place she can eat, she's kind of feeling hungry. Uh, and as you kind of have that thought and you're looking around, um, the voice kind of says, Ayuni, confident that their stomach was full, they were ready for adventure. Oh, um, so she can't go find the fish. There's a, there's a, there's a fishmonger like right down the street. Uh, uh, you can oh. see it very clearly. Oh, oh, really? I want to go get some fish. Um, all right. Uh, a uni sto strode off seemingly to nowhere. Something had caught their eye. Uh, a uni, you step over. There's a, a fishmonger there. In the distance, a humble fishmonger. No one of consequence, a uni thought, and strode by them. Uh, you're at the fishmonger. <laughs> Uh, can, can I have a, can I have two salmons? Um, the fishmonger replies, uh, two salmons for you, I've got those. Uh, and they kind of like reach up and, and go to like hand you something, but they just don't seem to have, uh, they just don't seem to have anything in their hand as they go to give it to you. What if she thinks about salmon? Uh, go ahead and make me an intelligence check. Oh, intelligence, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking about salmon real hard, um, and the voice kind of calls out, A uni stood and contemplated salmon. What was it? How could one obtain it? The great mysteries of life. I'm totally going to do the same thing I'm going to think about salmon, but in my hands. <laughs> All right, go ahead and make an intelligence check. All right. Standing alone in the square, Valrath held out their hands, expectantly, waiting for something who could know what. You know what? This seems like a, like a, like a really good place to just paint some... A hammer ringed, ringed out, and you hear ding, ding, uh, and over kind of in the uh, 
uh, over to the side. The buildings just seem to like rearrange themselves, and <laughs> all of a sudden now they're just there's a blacksmith that seems to be crying onto their anvil. Uh, that's kind of front and center in the town square. <laughs> I'm totally going over there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, pay, I'm gonna hate that guy. I'm All right, I'm gonna paint him at the forge. He's very sad. Um, uh, Bog, you you begin painting this individual. Uh, go ahead and make me a check with your painters. Wait. Uh, what would that be? I just. Uh... Bog, are you painting the I blacksmith, am painting, or are I am you painting, painting a crying. picture of the ba- blacksmith? I am painting the crying man. Let's just let's just put it like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Just roll me a check to see the quality of your art. Just probably charisma. Yeah, charisma dexterity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um. Oh yeah. This is a great. You've captured every tear. You can see the sadness uh, in this man very clearly uh, in your painting. It comes through. Uh, and yeah, uh, Valrath, you said you're going over there. Absolutely. Uh, he's kind of banging on the anvil. Uh, and you just hear ding, ding. Uh, the voice kind of speaks out. Bog Braz stopped a moment to capture this man in the depths of his sorrow, crystallizing his sadness for all to see for all time. Aeneas, uh, gonna, gonna forget a little bit, a little bit, not all of it, but about the salmon and, uh, go over to investigate the crying blacksmith because this is a problem. No one should be crying. Uh, and the, um, the blacksmith's kind of, uh, still kind of hammering on the anvil, uh, and, uh, he looks up at you. Sorry. Don't have much time to work today if you're looking to buy goods. Been a hard day for me. Uh, he kind of looks up. My tale is a sad one. Uh, and the voice kind of speaks, and then the blacksmith recounted his tale of how his son was viciously captured by orcs as they wandered along the dusty trail together. They shared a moment of emotion and camaraderie with the blacksmith and agreed without haste to recover his wavered child. And the blacksmith now kind of, the blacksmith kind of goes and looks towards you and he goes, Thank you so much. If you are truly able to recover my son, I'll give you my prized sword. I've forged it for, well, I spent my whole life working on it. It's my masterwork, and I'll now bestow it to you. Uh, And they kind of go over and and reach into a chest, and as they pull it out, um, you see they kind of hold their hands out, and before them uh, is a very long salmon that they pass on to you, and they say, this sword, may it serve you well. And he kind of bows with a, a bit of reverence as he's just holding out a big fish. Uh, uh he's gonna take that. <laughs> yeah. All right, you grab onto it. Uh, uh, and then the voice kind of calls out, Ayuni, clasp the sword with. Ayuni, clasp the sword. <laughs> the salmon with. And. The voice kind of stumbles a little bit in the sky. Uh, it's getting a bit confused, it seems. And the four heroes strode off to encounter these terrible orc raiders. Uh, and you find yourself walking on a path outside of the town again. So is the salmon a sword, or is the sword uh, No, a it's, just a sa- it's just a salmon. It looks like uh, to you. You're not sure why he said it was a sword. Get it. She's uh, well, not, she's not going to eat it. Thrun, it. Thrun would like to examine the salmon for signs of life. Um, it is a uh, fairly, de- it's definitely dead. Um, it is very well cooked. Uh, it seems to have been salted and kind of brined a bit. It's a nice, uh, would make a very good meal. Smoked, gonna- perhaps? Are you gonna try and take my salmon? Uh, well, I you need to just hold on to it. Well, if it was a salmon that was still alive, I would be trying to find it a place to swim. But it is dead, so I guess you can keep it. I have a friend that can bring that back to life. I haven't 
I haven't had a salmon in such a long time. I'm sure Bartholomew can help you with that if you desire salmon. Ahuni looked over their sword hungrily. Little did they know the terrible ambush that waited for them just up ahead amongst these woods. Thru would like to proceed very, 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 very cautiously and keep his eyes wide open. Did, did you hear that about the, about the ambush? Uh, what ambush? I, I just got a very spooky feeling down my spine that I should be very, very careful going forward. Oh no, the craziness is spread to me. <laughs> <laughs> they called out in despair as their insanity continued to grip them fully. Their misery would be something they'd be put out of soon when the orcs slaughtered them mercilessly when they jumped out from behind the rock on the path up ahead. Sounds fun! Behind the rock on the path? You see a big rock up ahead. It's kind of long and, and low. It looks like a great place to take cover. Uh, it also has a little bit of a high ground over the road where it kind of ducks down. Uh, it seems like a great place where they could really get an effective ambush. Hmm. The heroes oh, oh. continued oh. down the path beneath the rock. You think I'm thinking through? Wait, Thrun stops for a moment and checks over the path for sm for a handful of smaller rocks. Um, like just your oh yes 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 yeah. Uh, go ahead, make a perception check. Um, there are pebbles and rocks abound. You are able to grab them. Yeah. How high is this rock uh, up above us? Um, you're not up that point in the path. The path, path kind of dips down a little bit, uh, and there's a little bit of a wall of dirt, and then the rock is kind of on top of that wall of dirt. Uh, and above the path, it's maybe like 10 feet up, uh, but you could easily like just walk off the path and go kind of around it if you wanted to. Why do that? With, do it with stop and kite shield. Uh, so yeah, what's everyone? So I assume you guys gonna discuss this a little bit. Uh, what's everyone doing? So you're like gonna walk down the path and then try and kite shield up before oh, they yeah. can jump out at you? Absolutely, sword in hand, ready to strike. Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna move back a bit personally. I am not built for being in the fray at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in the pack a little bit. Broom has his pebbles. He has his staff. He can do things. All right. Uh, where are you going to kind of position yourself as things are kicking off? Okay. seems reasonably comfortable near the front. Um, okay, so you're going to go up kind of in the same way that Valwraith and just get ready to basically ambush the ambush? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. I'm going to do the same thing as... Oh, so uh, all, th all three Thrun. of you are just going to go through. So I would like, in that case, since you're waiting for the ambush at the pass, I would like all of you to make me performance checks. Um, uh, performance checks to kind of play off that you don't get that anything is going on. Or deception, whichever one you're better at. You guys can pick. Oof. Uh-oh. The, the deciding... All right, you guys passed as a group. We need to get two out of four. Um, so, yeah, you're just kind of back there, and, and you're really selling it um, uh, as, you, as you're kind of there, just, you know, hold on, wait up, as, as everyone's kind of going ahead and like, tying your shoe or something like that. Thrum, um, you're, you're there just, you know, looking so nonchalant. Valrath, you have your sword out and bug. You're both a little bit tense, uh, but, you know, the casualness of the rest of your party kind of seems, a, seems to sell everything, uh, sell everything pretty well. Uh, and the voice kind of continues to speak. They walked beneath the rocks, their fate now sealed, completely unaware of what was to come. Uh, and- As soon as it says that, I'm kite shielding up. Uh, yeah, you kite shield up, and right as you're kind of doing that, uh, the uh, a bunch of these orcs all of a sudden run, jump up and just uh, and they kind of sound like that as they all go to like climb over the top and come after you. Uh, you guys are already ready, and I assume are already just sending counter attacks already up their way uh, as you ambush the ambush. Yeah, Thrun 
Uh, I would like you guys to roll for initiative, and the orcs are surprised as, like, you're already hitting them as they come up. They're kind of just, uh, as they're, you know, they're caught in their tracks as you uh, suddenly turn to face them. Uh, and the orcs are going to roll initiative. That's that guy. And that's this guy. Um, there seems to be uh, there seems to be three of them there. Uh, one of them is a very uh, uh, a very kind of grizzled looking one with a strange eye that kind of is there at the center. Uh, but they all um, they kind of jump out and go to attack you. But you all gain a surprise round uh, as these orcs go to uh, ambush you. What do you guys do? You said there is uh, a guy that looks kind of gruff. Um, yeah, there's one that has kind of like, uh, you see, because you're hanging back a little bit, you can see him pop up over. Um, they're, they look definitely kind of tall. They're, they're battle scarred in a lot of places. Um, you want to target that one? Uh, yeah, I will want to target that one, but let me take a little bit to look over my options, because these are the orcs. All right, well, since you're all in the surprise round and the orcs were, were thrown off by this, uh, I think you can all uh, just go at the same time for this first one. So what is everyone else doing while you're looking at that? I'm punching uh, the one that isn't, you know, permanently scarred just directly in the face. I'm just going to beat him up. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. Um, all right, uh, roll damage on that. That's uh, definitely gonna hit six points of bludgeoning damage. You uh, kind of whip up and uh, smack the orc in the face, just uh, throw him back a little bit. Uh, you gonna make a bonus action attack? Oh yeah. All right, swing away. And 17 will also hit, nice strikes, uh, roll again. For four, uh, 10 points, you batter the quick one, two. Boom, boom. Uh, the orc uh, gets thrown back a little bit. Uh, not in a very good, um, uh, not in very good shape. Uh, it looks like you can see he has like a broken nose at this point and is like kind of rearing back. Definitely a couple teeth knocked out. Uh, it looks like he's one, uh, one breath away from going down this one. Uh, anything else on your turn, Bug? All right, uh, my turn again? Oh, no, I'm just saying, was that all for your, your Oh, turn? yeah, that's it, that's okay. it. Okay. Um, and then that's going to bring us to, uh, who else wants to go? Uh, we Room to would like to throw a magic pebble at the one that has been beat up. All right, toss away. Uh, seven, unfortunately, will miss. The stone kind of whizzes past the shoulder. It was a dead-on hit, but then the two punches kind of, you know, threw his head to the side, and you weren't planning on so many uh, strong hits from Bob there. Uh, anything else on your turn through? Mm, nope. Valrath, you swinging? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's the all blade right now? It's a short sword. Very good. You stab up and in with the short sword for uh, 18 points of damage. Uh, roll that, that's... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, eight, what, am I ta- what am I talking about? 18, <laughs> 18 points. Oh, my God. I was like, wow, that's quite a hit. Uh, are plus, you attacking the uh, the one in the middle or are you attacking one of the ones on the outside? I'm, I'm doing the uh, one with the eye. All right, yeah, that's going to hit for 11 points. Uh, you stab into plus them. Two. Plus two. They... Plus two with, when I have a shield. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, you got the dueling right Oh, my God, you said you're a monster. All right, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, level two, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so you, uh, you I'm puppet. also going to smite. Oh. Oh, oh damn. Um, <laughs> add that, tack that smite on. Um, 21. That's going to hit for a total of 21 damage. They're still up. Uh, as the smite kind of pours in, it explodes kind of about um, the uh, the side. You land a deep, deep gash as the light pours out from the blade. Uh, but they are still standing after that, and they look down at you. How did you know? Um, Aeony's going to throw guiding bolts at them. At the one in the middle, the, the kind of tough-looking one? Yep, the one that just got stabbed. All right. Please attack away. 23 was absolutely going to hit. Roll damage on that. Another 11. Oof. Uh, yeah, they're already starting to look a little bit beat up, too. The light 
the uh, the coursing radiant energy crashes into them, uh, and they begin to kind of glow a, a brilliant, uh, a brilliant, what's it, white light uh, for guiding bolt, granting the next person to attack this one advantage. Uh, and that's the end of your surprise round, which brings us around to regular, regular, regular initiative. Uh, the first to act, in which case, is Thrum. You get to go again. Thrum will. <clears throat> will take his staff out, out off back and c- charge up to the one in the middle with the strange eye. As he does so, he casts Shillelagh on his staff and bashes. All right. Uh, 17 is, oh yeah, because you have advantage. 17 actually just barely hits. It's exactly what you needed. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for eight points of damage. You do another big kind of smack, uh, and they kind of like twist around and turn to the side. They're getting battered more and more. Uh, doesn't look like they could hold all that much more, uh, sustain all that much more damage. Um, as it gets to now, um, uh, it's going to get to the foe turn, uh, and all the foes are still up. Um, and the voice kind of continues to speak out. Reacting, the party moved with lightning-like reflexes, befitting those of gods. Having not known of the incoming ambush, their attacks were unnaturally swift. Uh, the, uh, the orcs then kind of go and swing. The orcs' fury was great as they turned to counterattack with all ferocity they have, as the orcs all kind of... Uh, and they're gonna go ahead and... Uh, swing away. Um, the two orcs are going to swing javelin. Uh, the one's going to swing a great axe at you. Um, we'll swing a, a great axe at you, Bug. That is a, an eight to hit. I assume that misses. Oh, um, yeah. Orcs are having a well. time. Uh, one's going to swing a great axe at you, through. Oof. That's 22. I guess you for five as the axe just, uh, cuts through. Uh, it gashes across your kind of uh, midsection. You take five points of slashing damage. Uh, and then the uh, the eye is going to go. They conjure a spiritual weapon. Um, uh, did not, which does not exist, but I can just roll a spell attack for them. Um, uh, and they're going after you, Valrath. That's a seven. Oh no. And then they're also going to stab at you with their spear. That does. You're gonna pay for that? <laughs> uh, all right, man, these rolls are terrible for them. Uh, they go and kind of stab into you. You get a sharp kind of catch at the gut with their spear as they go, you'll pay for that. Uh, and they, they get you. Um, the orc struck with ferocity, but the heroes still had quite a bit of fight left in them. As we move around to the next in initiative, which is Elraith, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm taking out Grimmish. Uh, all right, swing away. 21 will hit. Roll damage on that. Uh, are you, um, you gonna smite on top of it or are you just gonna do the 10? You know what? He's gonna get smited. All right. For another 10, 20 more points of damage, the paladin, man. Uh, you <laughs> cut across and your blade explodes again with uh, the holy energy of the cloud. Uh, you <laughs> stab deep, and the, um, the orc eye of Grumsh uh, kind of. <clears throat> Why? This is impossible. We were. And then before he can finish his uh, sentence, he collapses. The cloud is hell! Praise it! Praise the cloud! Praise it indeed. Uh, and Valrath, I assume that is all for your turn. Uh, yep. All right, that's going to send us next in initiative to Bog. What do you want to do, Bog? All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna hit the guy I hit before again. Please do. 19 will hit. Rolling hot for six. Another quick smack to the face. Uh, and with this one as your first two kind of one, two sent him reeling, this last one takes him down to the ground uh, as you finish off this uh, this orc. Collapses. <laughs> All um, right, so... Uh, there's one left. Am untouched. I within... Uh, am I within range of the, the last one? Um, yeah, you are. All right, I'm gonna use a flurry of blows. Um, all right, uh, go ahead and make that attack roll. 
Oh, the Flurry of Bowls is two attack rolls. Uh, both of those are going to hit. For eight points of damage, um, a quick smack to this one, and then you whip around in two more swift strikes for a total of eight damage in this last one. Battered once more as your boxing gloves lend uh, furiously. Uh, the voice kind of speaks. A whirlwind of blows, Bog struck with mercy, without mercy, uh, and the uh, this one's nearly down. Uh, as we move next in initiative to UA Uni. Uh, oh, let me look over some things. <laughs> okay. Uh, kind of a, a half-hearted, uh, slightly, how do I say this? Shy, kind of little magical cheer from Amy. Something that you've never, uh, that you never would have thought coming from her, right? Kind of like some sort of magical girl cheer, uh, cheerleader or something. <laughs> and uh, she's gonna spend a D6 to give uh, bow rates some healing from her healing light. All right, cool. Um, you just hear behind you this soft little, uh, just this soft little cheer of bow rates, and all of a sudden you feel much, uh, very much revitalized. Uh, go ahead and, um, Go ahead and roll that d6. You gain one point of healing, uh, yeah, and the voice kind of calls out, a mighty <laughs> wave of healing passed over Valrith as they were returned to full strength by the might of their ally. Oh, that's slightly sad. Um, uh, let's see. As, um, as for the fact that that was a bonus action, because that's healing light. Very good. Um, the, there's one more orc, right? Uh, indeed, there's one left. Okay, since Bog Frost is hit. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna shoot some ray, uh, I'm gonna shoot a ray of frost at that one, given the fact that, like, my, my cheer is a little, uh... All right, little go, ahead and, uh, go ahead and attack. 23, oof, hot rolls tonight, you guys. Uh, yeah, roll that damage. To ah, still hanging on. Uh, as you strike into him, he looks, uh, <laughs> uh, a bolt of frost kind of covers him up. Caught in a deep freeze, the orc stood there, waiting. Uh, as we move next uh, to Thrum initiative, the top of the initiative order. Thrum looks over to the orc, get chilly there, and just goes to bonk him over the head with his shillelagh. Swing away. 16 is going to hit, roll damage. Seven points of bludgeoning damage. You strike, uh, and the orc kind of falls down to the ground, uh, kind of knocked out of commission. Uh, and then um, in this moment, he kind of falls, and there is uh, kind of a moment as all of them have fallen silent. Uh, and then you see a fury burn within the orc's eyes as he uses the feature I forgot the other two had, uh, and he revises, he, re, uh, he revives at one hit point as he holds on with his relentless endurance, this orc tapping into his ancestry as it passes on to his turn. Uh, and before it... Oh, wait, you have a bonus action still. Yes. Yes, he's, he's, I have he's a bonus up. action. My apologies. And with that bonus action, I am also going to send a d6 of healing Valrath's way. Oh, very good! And he is also going to get one temporary hit point. Very nice. cool. Uh, so go ahead and roll that d6. So you gain another three points of healing, and uh, you have one H extra temporary HP. Um. So yeah, uh, Valrath, you're in good shape. Uh, and now it would pass to this orc's turn, and this orc kind of looks down. The voice calls out. The final remaining orc was cornered, but in his moment of desperation, inspiration came. Uh, and the orc kind of looks to the side, and you see next to him, kind of bundled up in the heat of combat you hadn't noticed, but here tied up on the ground, uh, you see what looks to be a, a wiggling figure tied up. The blacksmith's son? It looks like a gnome, actually. Uh, and this, uh, this orc kind of looks down, 
the orc took his great axe and hefted it over to the neck of the hostage that they still held. Uh, and the orc kind of in turn does that, and then the orc goes, don't move or this one gets it. Uh, and they have their uh, axe positioned over the neck of this gnome uh, for their turn. And then he kind of goes, I want you to all back away very slowly. Uh, as we move, um, uh, as we move in initiative to Valrath. What do you want to do, Valrath? All right. And that, I'm throwing a dagger. <laughs> You're just going to get him. All right. Uh, you definitely hit. Uh, as soon as you throw it, he's going to use his ready to action to attack the gnome. He has advantage because the gnome's prone. Uh, yeah. Uh, the gnome takes 12 points of slashing damage as the axe kind of comes down and cuts, uh, and, uh, Winsler kind of calls out, uh, and kind of falls unconscious there on the ground, uh, and you finish off the, um, you finish off the orc. Your target seems to be bleeding out. I run over, lay on hands. Uh, that's an action, unfortunately. Uh, it um, is. So that's going to, um, that's going to bring us, uh, next initiative, uh, to Bog. Uh, your target is bleeding out on the ground. What do you do? You know what? This seems like a great time for a painting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bog brows showing not even the slightest bit of compassion for this fellow living being once again painted the misery in the world. Uh, as you begin painting the bleeding out gnomes, that's all tied up. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Excellent. It's it's always a great time for a painting. Roll a roll a quality check as we move next initiative to uh, a uni. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up to the guy because he's bleeding out and that's not good. Uh, and I'm gonna cast cure wounds. All right. With a nice yeah, soft you're, you're... Cut. You're, uh, you're good. You kind of reach down and uh, the healing energy begins to emanate and move through uh, this figure's uh, body and the gnome kind of uh, calls out. You see they're kind of gagged currently, but their um, their wounds kind of stop and they stop shaking so violently. I'm also going to ungag him. Should I even roll the health or is he just alive? Um, oh, he's alive. Uh, if you just, he was dying, <laughs> bleeding out on the ground, but if you give him any healing, then he's good. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ungag him now because that's a nice thing to do. All right, Actually, you ungag I'm him and completely unbind him. him. <laughs> All right, yeah, you cut the bindings with these. <coughs> oh, thank God! Oh, that was so scary. Uh, and the voice calls out. The blacksmith's son stood and <laughs> reconnected himself. He longed to be reunited with his father and was grateful to the heroes that had saved him. Uh, and he goes, Are you guys part of the story? You don't look like the... You don't look like the heroes. Are you Winsler Hubble Books? Oh, thank God. All right. Yeah, I'm not the blacksmith's son. I'm Winsler's Bubble Books, but I got... I don't know what happened. I found this old book here in the library and it just pulled me in. And I guess I got stuck as the blacksmith's son role. You guys must have gotten the heroes. Uh, hey, hurry, from... hurry, hurry, give him the sword. It, it is his heirloom prized possession from his father. I'm saying with quotation marks. Uh, oh I'm yeah, the family heirloom sword. I am supposed to inherit that someday. I suppose, and Auni very uh, solemnly and sadly hands him a salmon <laughs> before ex before uh, very calmly explaining, we're from a uh, Bartholomew's adventure. Uh, no, I know. I, I figured. Ah, uh, thank God you're here. Yeah, I've been here for. I think it's been. I haven't been keeping good track of time. I think it's been maybe two, three weeks now. That's a nightmare. I was just, the, the place, the, the place was closed, um, the, the place was closed, and there was, uh, well, there's no one around. It's uh, no actually, really Good. it's actually been about a week. Uh, not here. And he kind of looks up, and he kind of looks up at the sky, and just, you just see, like, a look of anger in his eyes as the voice calls out, The blacksmith's son now rescued, the heroes return to the town, victorious! 
uh, and you're walking back along the road, and you can see the town in the distance. Uh, Winsler's walking along beside you. Does uh, Winsler look fatigued and or still bothered by his wounds? He um, he looks like he's feeling a little bit better. I mean, he's not in perfect shape, that's for certain. Uh, but he looks like he's feeling better. And like as that scene cut happened, uh, where you guys were just all of a sudden walking again, uh, he looked like he was more healed than he was when you were talking to him right after the millet. Thrum offers to <clears throat> Thrum offers to carry him if he gets tired or just wants a respite from his wounds. Very well. Uh, yeah, uh, he kind of looks at me, oh man, that would actually be, that would actually be great if you want to, yeah, I'll just, I'll just hop right up there. Uh, and you kind of walk back into the town and the townsfolk, uh, the voice kind of pulls out, they returned to the town and the townsfolk therein rejoiced. Cheers and laughter were had by all. The heroes returning the sun to the blacksmith were heralded for all time as the great champions of Hamlet. They were given riches and homes, and therein they settled and lived a happy life forevermore, taking families. Uh, and you see now in front of you, um, you see a bunch of figures uh, walk up. Some of them seem to be your children as they run up and just say to you, Thank you so much. You're such a great hero. Mama, Papa, uh, as all these kids are now swarming around your legs and spouses seem to look on lovingly towards all of you from a distance. Hey, uh, Winsler. How do we um, get out? Uh, yeah. Yeah. How do, how do we leave? I don't know. I think, uh, and as he says that, um, um, as, as he says that, the voice kind of calls out. Um, and so it was that our heroes settled down, making way for the next generation. Uh, the blacksmith stood before his son, and you see the blacksmith kind of is there now, looks to Winsler, son, I want you to have this token of our relationship. You've grown up to be such a strong young man, and it's your time now to become a hero. This is for you. I've reforged another, and he hands Winsler a salmon, and Winsler just kind of takes it and looks at it kind of strangely. The voice calls out, <laughs> And so the blacksmith's son held his blade into the air, striking the story anew. And Winsler kind of just like awkwardly puts this salmon up in the air. Huh. And then pff, lightning seems to crash uh, down into the space. And all of a sudden, all of you are pff, uh, kind of just back within the library as you just all tumble out of this book uh, and into the space. The book closes. Pff, uh, and it's just shut there. Uh, it's just shut there on the table. Uh, you see on the title of the book, it just says, The Tale of Hamlet. Uh, and yeah. you're all just uh, thrown out uh, and uh, just kind of laying there, catching your breath. You watch as Winsler kind of looks up uh, and looks at this book and then just... Uh, I've never done this before, but uh, he just throws a firebolt at it and it just explodes into flames. He's still carrying the salmon. Uh, as soon as we hop out, I yell, THE END! Aeone looks very longingly at the salmon that he still happens to be holding because she really wanted that salmon. Oh, do you want this? I don't care. I haven't had a salmon in a long time. Uh, and they hand you the salmon and they go, Wow, thanks for rescuing me. How did you guys know I was here? Did, like, the town... I guess the town must have hired eventually. I didn't know they cared. Uh... And we as, were, uh, as he's doing that, I'm gonna pull a Swedish fish out of my bag and go, hey, Uni, have you ever had one of these? What, what is it? <laughs> it's a Swedish, it's a, it looks like a gigantic candy fish. Uh, and as you kind of, uh, as Valwraith kind of hands this over to you, um, you are paid your 200 Bartholomew bucks, or I'm sorry, your 100 Bartholomew bucks for the completion of this. I wish this was a oh, I'm, yeah. My mistake. I'm sorry. Sorry to yeah. build false hope. Uh, you each gain one point of experience, which means if you're level one, you are now level two. Uh, and with that, our adventure tonight comes to a close. Thank you all very much for playing. You've successfully saved Hamlet. And well, so are you. heroes considered. Would they go to the shop? or not yes 
And so they made their way to Bartholomew's shop, striding in where they were met by an old friend. Ah, greetings, adventurers. Uh, as you walk in, Bartholomew stands before you. Uh, so, I trust everything went well. Um, do you have anything you wish to uh, purchase at this time? Chris has told me that I should do the bag, so I'm going to do the bag. Very Raise well. the cloud. Uh, go ahead and roll me a D1000, and I wish you, as always, only the absolute best of luck, which it seems that you are incapable of, of getting anything else as of late. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Ah, spoke too soon, but hey, uh, my give apologies. me some cool. All right, let's see what you find. Um, you reach into the bag, and your hand passes over first what appears to be um, a hat. Uh, it's, it's maybe made of tinfoil. You, you put it aside. Uh, relatively quickly. Um, then something extremely cold, it kind of burns your hand almost to touch it. You don't want that. And you instead grab a small vial, and as you pull it out, it has a very fragrant scent. It appears to be perfume. And Bartholomew speaks, Ah, this is the perfume of bewitching. You can um, uh, apply it and, and put it upon yourself, and for one hour you will have advantage on all charisma checks. Uh, that are directed at humans of a challenge rating one or lower. Um, those who are subjected to the uh, perfume's effects will never know that they've been influenced by magic. You've gained the perfume of bewitching. How useful. Yes, uh, very good, very good. Uh, is there anyone else, anything I can get for anyone else? Uh, what, what, what's, this, uh, what's this bag thing everyone's talking about? Uh, it is a great uh, magical bag in which I have a number of uh, magic items and objects of power and my lunch and stuff. So if you wish to uh, pull from it, it costs 500 and you just get whatever is in. You may pull out the legendary blade Heave Yaws, which was poured of pure shadow by the spirit smiths of East Tor, or um, there's a dead goat in there somewhere. I, I pulled this and I wave the old blade. Uh, put it back in. You know what? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll pull. Uh, roll a d1000, and I wish you the highest, highest of luck. Woo! Nice! All right. Ooh, let, us, let us take a look and see what you get. Um, you reach into the bag, and your hand passes over first what appears to be um, it, it appears to be some type of, of weapon, perhaps, uh, perhaps a staff, uh, a, a quarter staff. Uh, not exactly what you're, uh, what you're kind of looking for in this moment. It kind of falls from your grasp. And then something very thin, a, a small sheet of paper. You go for a sturdy item. It appears to be, uh, it appears to be a ring of some kind. And as you pull it. Uh, it's very simple. It's, it, it seems to be silver. There's no crest, no gem upon it. Um, and Bartholomew speaks up. <clears throat> uh, this is the ring of unyielding endurance, a very powerful item. Uh, while you wear the ring, if you would make a uh, constitution, a uh, concentration saving throw, you do so with advantage if you did not already have a <laughs> advantage upon the row. Um, additionally, if you would be reduced to zero hit points while wearing the ring, you are instead reduced to one hit point. Uh, each time this occurs, the ring uh, flares a brilliant golden daylight uh, around you, and all creatures of uh, an intelligence greater uh, than five within the radius automatically understand that the ring is the reason for your endurance. Uh, the ring can be uh, struck uh, and uh, damaged <clears throat> and uh, will taken out. So I'd be careful, but um, with that, uh, while you have it, you essentially, um, well, I believe you just can't die. That's really good. <laughs> I didn't know what it was when I started it, but it's really good. <laughs> uh, but they can attack the ring. <laughs> it's very terrifying. Uh, you've gained the ring of unyielding endurance. <laughs> oh my. I just broke character, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, is well, care to pass that over to me? No. <laughs> uh, a good play. I like where your hands at. You're close, I think, on that one. Um, anyone else? And hearing nothing, I believe we'll be right back in a moment with our second adventure of the night. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.